Welcome to Market Movers on this beautiful day, where we bring you the pulse of Nigeria's economy, right from the stock markets to the community markets. My name is Osai Ilome. On the show today, we'll be taking you through the vibrant business landscapes of Nigeria's diverse zones. We'll be exploring the streets, we'll be exploring the latest business and economy developments, and the innovative products from different companies that are shaping our marketplaces, driving growth, and fostering regional synergies. On the national scale, we'll be exploring the inflow of foreign direct investments to identify their allocations and the tangible impact, if any, that they have contributed to our nation's prosperity. But first, We'll go straight to local and international market reports. Uh, then we will move our attention to zonal business and economy report with our zonal business and economy editor, Sonny Onaji, bringing us up to speed on the business and economy developments from the zones. Thereafter, I'll be joined by Steve Mwachiku, our in-house guest analyst, to dissect the foreign direct investment inflows and allocations why Mr. Uh, MJ Young, the founder of FX Oracle AI Global, will also be joining us to make a sense of the forest trading dynamics in Nigeria. I can tell you it's a bumper package, so stay tuned as we bring you the stories, the statistics, and the strategies that relate to how the market, uh, the indicators and the fundamentals that are shaping the market. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. On Monday, the dollar stabilized against other major currencies, while the Naira remained close to its lowest point since March 20th. Traders are closely watching for a crucial inflation report to gauge whether there will be any interest rate cuts in the U.S. this year. The Naira touched a seven-week low over the weekend, trading at 1,466 Naira per U.S. dollars at the official window and 1,459 Naira per U.S. dollars at the parallel market. The CBN is presently under pressure to hike interest rates to accelerate stability in Nigeria's foreign exchange markets amid weak oil output and recent payment of FX liabilities. Market fundamentals indicate that it is unlikely that the Naira will hit the February low, at least not this month, as traders await the outcome of the CBN's MPC meeting. The CBN intensified efforts this year to stabilize the Naira's exchange rate volatility, which caused the Naira to appreciate steadily against the dollar from roughly 1,912 Naira per dollar in late February to below 1,000 Naira per dollar in April and has now plunged back to 1,400 Naira per dollar levels. The Central Bank of Nigeria plans a major restructuring in its operations aiming to transfer about 5.5 trillion naira in development finance activities to a combination of private banks and development finance institutions known as DFIs. According to a new report on Nigeria, this move aligns with the recommendations from the International Monetary Fund on the need for the country to streamline its economic policies and focus on core central banking functions. These activities will now be handled by DFIs jointly owned by the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank as well as private financial institutions. Under the new strategy, the CBN will gradually phase out its direct involvement in developing financing, which historically included lending on consensual terms to sectors like agriculture and small and medium-sized enterprises. The IMF has been supportive of this shift, suggesting that it will bring the CBN to focus more on its primary roles, including monetary stability and regulation. It has also recommended that the concessionality of new lending should be limited to areas where market failures are evident. 
The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Olayemi Kadosu, said that the members of the Monetary Policy Committee will do whatever is necessary to get a handle on the country's persistent inflation. The CBN's hawkish stance on inflation has become obvious from the first MPC meeting held in February, when the committee raised the benchmark lending rate by 400 basis points to 22.75% from 18.75%. It has since been raised to 24.75%. Kadosu said this in an interview with the Financial Times on Monday, indicating that interest rates will stay high for as long as necessary to tame inflation. He told the Financial Times that there was every indication that the Monetary Policy Committee would do whatever is necessary to keep soaring inflation in check. The federal government may need to raise a supplementary budget to accommodate the proposed minimum wage increase for workers. This is because the negotiated amount may surpass the budgeted amount in the original 2024 budget. The International Monetary Fund gave this recommendation in its latest staff country report for Nigeria. The authorities noted that a supplementary budget may be needed to accommodate the outcome of the ongoing wage structure negotiations, which may exceed what they had included in the 2024 budget, the report stated. The All Share Index for the Nigeria stock market on Monday, May 13, declined by 0.53%, settling at 97,709.38 from the previous close of 98,234.28, indicating a bearish sentiment among investors. The sentiment was further reflected in the market's breadth, which closed negative with 19 equities gaining, while 24 equities declined. The decline in the ASI and the negative market breadth suggests that investors were more inclined to sell rather than buy, leading to a drop in stock prices for a larger number of listed companies. This could be attributed to various factors such as profit taken, marked down of stocks or other macroeconomic factors influencing investor behavior on Monday. This brings the year to date to 30.84%, the month to date to a negative 0.43% and the week to date to a negative 0.54%. Market capitalization closed at 55.265 trillion naira, while an aggregate of 439,100,001 units of shares was traded in 8,607 deals valued at 11,376,692,371 naira 69 kobo. The top five gainers were TEEP. Tantalizers, Stalin NG, Ikeja Hotel, and UPL. While the top five losers were Seplat, PZ, E Transact, Unity Bank, Nascon. Stock to watch include Access Bank, UBA, Zenith, GT Co, J Paul Gold, and Tantalizers. Most Asian stocks kept to a tight range on Tuesday as anticipation of key U.S. inflation data deterred any major trades, while Chinese markets retreated as another major property developer defaulted on bond payments. Regional markets traced a lack of committed moves on Wall Street as traders remained wary of any major bets before inflation readings on Tuesday and Wednesday. U.S. stock index futures were also range-bound in Asian trade, while Chinese stocks stall as property markets hit with fresh defaults. Thank you for staying with us, our market movers. And like I prom- uh, promoted earlier on, I have Sonny Onaji with me on set. Sonny Onaji is the d- editor of Market Movers and is here with his findings across the zones on Zonal Business and Economy Roundtable. Sonaj, what's on the table? Wow. Thank you, Osai. All right, uh, welcome to the uh, Zonal Business update right here on Market Movers. 
A lot seems to be happening, mm. but uh, we'll be focusing basically on two states okay. in Nigeria. Yeah. Enugu in Southeast Nigeria mm -hmm. and Nasrawa, North Central. Okay, if you recall that the Enugu state government recently signed a hundred billion deal with Pragmatic Pounds Limited, mm. the subsidiary of Diamond Stripes Limited, to revive the Moribund Enugu State United Palm Products Limited, mm. UPPL. This initiative is part of Governor Peter Mbasa administration's effort to transform dormant state assets into productive ones, aiming to boost the state's economy from a $4.4 billion to $30 billion. The partnership is expected to create numerous jobs and have a substantial socioeconomic impact on the state, particularly in enhancing production in the oil palm industry, which is a notable export commodity. Mm. The government has assured investors of its commitment to ease of doing business and responsiveness to make the partnership beneficial for both the company and the state. However, there have been criticisms yeah. regarding this partnership. Mm. The Labour Party in Enugu State has raised concerns suggesting that the deal might be a case of economic mismanagement. Mm. Okay, uh, they pointed out that Pragmatic Palms Limited was registered only a few days before the partnership agreement was signed. Mm. Questioning the company's experience and track record to handle such a significant project. The party has called for the attention of the people of Enugu State, the federal government of Nigeria, and the anti-corruption agencies to what they perceive as a potential diversion of state resources. It's important to know that we are still working our sources on these uh, to, uh, you know, development mm. to further identify uh, perhaps the allegations around uh, what they are saying is a case of diversion of state resources. Uh, but as we get more on mm. it, we'll definitely uh, bring it on the show. Now, that, mm. that is awesome, uh, uh, Sonny. Um, coming to the studio, I, you know, get a confirmation that the state government, any state government in this case, released uh, a yes. statement. yes. What can you tell us about that? They did release a statement mm. uh, because of the criticism that trailed the announcement. Yeah. However, it had been signed. But uh, some of the issues that people are raising, particularly the Labour Party, where they are saying uh, the company in question was registered on the 6th of May, 2024. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Uh, they, they are questioning the swiftness, the alacrity with which the deal was signed mm. to a company that is barely uh, incorporated on the 6th of May, about a week, I mean, two weeks ago. Uh, so they are questioning why the rush, why the quickness, why the, oh. the immediate approach to, you know, awarding such a huge contract to a company that was just incorporated on the 6th of May, 2024. However, the Enugu State Government, in response to that criticism, has also put out a statement to say that they are not becuting the right completely, mm, yeah. you know, to the company. The company. Yes, that it is, there's an equity contribution on the mm. part of the state government. Okay. The state government is providing 40% of the plantation, of the mm. palm plantation, mm -hmm. while the company will make up the 60%. Percent. Uh, uh, in as much as that explanation did not also go well with the, you know, uh, people who are against this initiative, mm. the Enugu state government, you know, because they are questioning the safety of the investment, of the state investment yes. in, a, they, they call it a one-man show. Yes. Uh, given the fact that the company uh, it was just registered on the 6th of May. And, and, and there is something that they said about the MD of that company, uh, which they are partnering with, being the same person yes. promoting the third company yes. in question. Part of the defense the Enugu State government put out was the fact that in as much as a Pragmatic Pan Limited was registered recently mm. they have a guarantee company mm -hmm. which is the Di diamond stripes limited yes. uh, but if they go to discover again that the md of diamond stripe is the same person mm. that is the md of pragmatic palms limited however the Enugu state government had gone to quote the relevant sections of the law mm -hmm. uh, that's a company on allied matters act come yes. on where the pre incorporation of company as such mm -hmm. is allowed according to section 96 subsection 1 yes. of kama uh, i think that is where they got the backing the legal backing to do what oh, they, they did. did yes all right that, that is a very insightful and we we look into uh, getting more information about you know the outcome of these conversations mm -hmm. and you know to be able to hold the illegal state accountable that is the essence of this now can you what can you tell us recently you you talked about uh the nasawa state as part of the findings that you have for us yes uh as you are aware the president represented by the senior president 
that did commission a lithium factory mm. in Nasarawa State, North Central Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, the lithium factory in Nasarawa State is a great development in our standard. Uh, let me mention that Nasarawa State executed that project in collaboration with Avatar New Energy Materials Company Limited, mm. a Chinese firm. Okay, uh, and, and, and that was recently, uh, uh, like I said, it was commissioned by the president. Okay, okay, let's look at the opportunities because a lot of people, uh, before now, uh, the, the, the mining activity in Nasara State, we know Nasara State as the home of solid minerals, and mining activities has always been that of artisanal mining. Yes. Okay, but the lithium factory is said to have a capacity to produce about 4,000 metric tons of lithium per day. It is expected to create approximately 4,000 job mm. opportunities. Wow. Also, it represents a significant step towards harnessing Nigeria's solid mineral potential and enhancing the nation's economy. Mm. And following the success of this factory execution, Canmax Technologies, another Chinese firm, has announced a new investment of $200 million mm. for a second lithium processing plant in the state further expanding the sector's capacity. And now let's look at the potential. What are the potential? The factory is poised to position Nigeria as a key player in the global lithium market, crucial for the production of batteries, for electric vehicles and other commodities. The project aligns with the government's renewed hope agenda, aiming to diversify the economy by leveraging the mining sector. The plant's operation is expected to contribute significantly to revenue generation economic growth with the potential to process 18,000 metric tons of lithium daily, mm. uh, totaling 4.5 million metric tons annually. Huh? Somehow, you may think that it is all uhu, yeah. but no. There are pitfalls that must be considered, and mm. that's the point we want to make on the show. Yeah. Despite the positive outlook, critics have raised concerns. President Tirubu has advised lithium investors to prioritize environmental protection and community engagement warning against leaving the host community in ruins due to exploration activities. There are fears that the quest for lithium could lead to environmental degradation and security concerns if not managed responsibly. Mm. Critics also stress the importance of ensuring that the benefits of such projects extend to local communities and that the operation adhere to strict environmental standards. In conclusion, the commission of the lithium factory in Nasarawa State presents a mix of opportunity and challenges. Mm. While it holds the promise of economic revitalization and job creation, it also brings to the fore the need for sustainable and responsible mining practices. It is imperative that the government and investors work closely with local communities to ensure that the factory's operation are beneficial and do not compromise the environment or the well-being of the residents. Following these pitfalls, experts have recommended that certain policy framework be put in place. Here are the recommendations. Mm. Mm. Uh, let, let me take them one after the other. Continuous monitoring of the factory's environmental impact, implementation of community development programs, establishment of clear guidelines for sustainable mining practices, regular dialogue between the government, investors, and local communities to address any concerns. And these are some of the recommendations that we've been able you know, to, to make at the moment. And we, we expect that it will guide the, the government going forward. Wonderful, mm. wonderful. These are very, very insightful uh, mm. uh, findings that you are bringing on the show uh, this day. Uh, what can you tell us about you know products that are gaining the market shares across the zones in the states? Okay, let me quickly tease our audience about several innovative products and services that are making new entries across various regions, mm. reflecting the country's growing entrepreneurial spirit and economic diversification. All right, let's uh, look at some of those products uh, quickly. Okay, the first on my list is rechargeable solar power traffic lights. These traffic management systems are designed to operate efficiently even during power outages, improving road safety and reducing congestion. The second one is Kia Kia Gas, mm. Mm. a service offering pay as you go gas cylinders, transforming cooking solutions in Nigeria. These products and services are not only contributing to the local economy, but also have the potential to impact the regional markets and beyond. Yeah. They represent a mix of technology, healthcare, energy, and industrial sectors showcasing Nigeria's diverse economic landscape. Uh, I, I think that's how uh, much we have for you on those products. Wonderful. Thank mm. you so much, uh, Sonny Onaji, for this wonderful product that uh, you have shared with our audience today. Um, we're going to keep our eyes on these uh, on these products, and uh, we hope you keep your eyes on this product as well. Uh, we're going to come back uh, with uh, Stephen Wachiku to take a different perspectives uh, on some of these issues and how you know it's moving the market. 
in your location. Before then, let's go for a quick break. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop. Are you a young adult with a passion for storytelling and content creation? Do you reside in the Niger Delta and desire to become a filmmaker or content creator? Then you should register for the ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop, an exciting opportunity brought to you by ADBN TV. Embark on a journey to unlock your creative potential by learning the art of filmmaking, sound design, and lighting using your smartphone. This is your chance to turn your ideas into reality. So hurry now and register via our website at www.adbntv.com. But wait, that's not all. Your creations will be aired on ADBN TV, channel 258 on DSTV, 140 on Star Times, Avo TV app, Limex World TV app, and Ninja TV app, reaching audiences far and wide. And guess what? Three lucky winners will be selected for the grand cash prize of 5 million naira. Meet our facilitators. Register now at www.adbntv.com and take the first step towards a future in filmmaking and content creation. ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop. Unleash your creativity. In a world of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinion on different issues, it is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. ADBN. No matter what I see, enough it make mouth heavy to talk them. That's now why people will talk. 
People they talk the show on Monday to Friday by 5 p.m. on top ADBN TV. ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop. Are you a young adult with a passion for storytelling and content creation? Do you reside in the Niger Delta and desire to become a filmmaker or content creator? Then you should register for the ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop, an exciting opportunity brought to you by ADBN TV. Embark on a journey to unlock your creative potential by learning the art of filmmaking, sound design and lighting using your smartphone. This is your chance to turn your ideas into reality. So hurry now and register via our website at www.adbntv.com. But wait, that's not all. Your creations will be aired on ADBN TV, channel 258 on DSTV, 140 on Star Times, Avo TV app, Limex World TV app, and Ninja TV app reaching audiences far and wide. And guess what? Three lucky winners will be selected for the grand cash prize of 5 million naira. Meet our facilitators. now at www.adbntv.com and take the first step towards a future in filmmaking and content creation. ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop. Unleash your creativity. In a world of overwhelming voices where everyone has different opinion on different issues, it is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Bonigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. ADBN Advocate Broadcasting Network. No matter what I see, Enough it make mouth heavy to talk them. That's now why people will talk. People they talk the show on Monday to Friday by 5 p.m. on top ADBN TV.
Women Voices, where everyone has different opinion on different issues. It is important that we bring the core issue to the fore. Join me, Nancy Banigo, on Softline as we lend our voices to inform and influence your thoughts and actions. This is not just mere talk, it is an invocative program that touches the core of our existence. ADB. No matter what I see, enough it make mouth heavy to talk them. That's now why people will be talk. People they talk the show on Monday to Friday by 5 p.m. on top ADBN TV. ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop. Are you a young adult with a passion for storytelling and content creation? Do you reside in the Ninja Delta and desire to become a filmmaker or content creator? Then you should register for the ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop, an exciting opportunity brought to you by ADBN TV. Embark on a journey to unlock your creative potential by learning the art of filmmaking, sound design, and lighting using your smartphone. This is your chance to turn your ideas into reality. So hurry now and register via our website at www.adbntv.com. But wait, that's not all. Your creations will be aired on ADBN TV, channel 258 on DSTV, 140 on Star Times, Avo TV app, Limex World TV app, and Ninja TV app, reaching audiences far and wide. And guess what? Three lucky winners will be selected for the grand cash prize of five million naira. Meet our facilitators. Register now at www.adbntv.com and take the first step towards a future in filmmaking and content creation. ADBN Smartphone Film Workshop. Unleash your creativity. Thank you for staying with us on Market Movers. Uh, a bit uh, technical issues delayed our coming back uh, from the Zonal uh, and Business uh, Findings with Sonny Onaji. Uh, but right now, I have with me uh, Mr. MJ Young, the CEO of FX Oracle AI Global, who will be sharing with us insight on forex trading. Uh, because as you will know, there, there has been a lot of misconceptions about forex. And on this show, we intend to demystify some of those uh, misconceptions. And also, I have our regular in-house analyst uh, in the person of Steve Machuku, who will be giving us his perspective on some of the issues that were raised on the zonal business and economy uh, reports, uh, particularly as it has to do with the Enugu State Government and the Pragmatic Palms uh, Partnership. And of course, the commissioning of the lithium factory in Nasarawa State. So, but first, before I come to you, uh, MJ, let me quickly bring in uh, Steve Umachiku. Uh, Steve, can you hear me? Steve is joining us virtually, and uh, we seem to have some a bit technical issues. Uh, but well, can you hear me, Steve? Okay. Before Steve, okay. Steve, are you there? Can you hear me, Steve? Okay, so before we bring Steve back on air, let me come to, let me talk to MJ. MJ, um, you are the CEO of Oracle FS Global. Yes. Can you help us to understand the uh, concept of forex trading? Because to an ordinary Nigerian, forex trading seems to be uh, a bit complex. 
Yes, thank you so much. Um, when it comes to forex trading, the concept of forex trading in Nigeria is um, it's a new concept, if I must say, because um, what people have been experiencing in the past is it has been puzzles came, people have been used to putting their money into investment and people run away, those investment online shut down. Mm. But the real concept of online trading is actually an old concept, but in Nigeria it's just like a baby mm. and experience for the common Nigerians. So I want to say when it comes to online trading, it's actually the buying and selling of currencies online and it is actually regulated mm. and it is legal. It is regulated yes, and it is legal. Yes, But most people don't seem to you know, have those kind of understanding. Now, from your own uh, point of view as the expert in this field, what are the major criticisms of forex trading practices in Nigeria, particularly uh, as it has to do with transparency? You know, you, you just mentioned about regulation. Um, is the regulation uh, enough? Uh, and what, what is the uh, extent to which uh, people are allowed to do certain things and to what extent uh, have they been able to um, put some of these corporates uh, behind bars or, you know, make them to pay the price of, you know, deception? You know, I overall, what, you know, are the criticism has to do with transparency from your own experience? Yeah, when, when you look into the industry, the space is actually, like every other industry and space, mm. the forest space is actually filled with um, a lot of scammers and um, people who take money illegally, who are not authorized or licensed mm. by um, the Financial Commission or the government to actually do that. And that is because of poor regulation internally, talking about Nigeria space. Yeah. And um, But the fact is that um, when you look around, you find out that a lot of these people are behind bars now, uh, behind the bar in jail, they have been tried. You hear issues like um, 50 billion Nera scam mm. and investment running, you know, um, unregulated or unchecked mm. in, um, in Nigeria space, which is not like that in other space like the US, mm. the Australian space. Mm. So, but in times of um, regulation and bringing, bringing those people, um, you know, to book, the, I think that um, the government is really, really trying. Okay, so um, uh, uh, I want to hold you there. Uh, I have information now from uh, from the MCL that uh, our other guest is live. Steve, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, thank you so much for joining us again after all the technical glitches. Um, so, but again, you are here now. I think that is what matters. Our viewers want to hear from you uh, as per the you know, the issue that has been raised during the Zona Business and Economy uh, reports and the findings by our, you know, editor uh, on the issue of the partnership between Enugu State Government and Pragmatic Palms uh, Limited. Um, from your own assessment, what do you think the 100 billion naira deal between these two parties will, you know, contribute to the state? Do you think you have the potential of revitalizing the state economy? Well, there are two ways to look at it. I've listened to your editor. Uh, there are controversies around it, but let's take the first phase of it, which is uh, the yields from the Enugu State Government Round Table, Business Round Table, the deep couple of months, and having to secure the $100 billion investment in this regard is a good one. Uh, the controversy will always be because they work and operate within a political environment. Uh, there will be some eyebrows, there will be some uh, some some concerns, perhaps. And I'm very sure that the government will also look into those issues that are being raised by this individual. But first, the first phase of it is that, or the first phase of it is the attraction or the investment size of 100 billion to revitalize or reform the farm industry in Enugu State. Remember that uh, this is one of the pioneer projects of the former Eastern Nigeria, where you have the likes of, uh, uh, forgotten the name, uh, who actually established that farm and it has been a moribund for more than uh, three decades now. And we are having an opportunity uh, to get it back to fit and to make sure that it also serves 
as a source of revenue to the government of Enugu State. So it's a welcome development. Uh, and the second phase, which is the controversies of who actually is coming to invest or take a stake of 60% uh, um, structural investment in that very uh, um, plantation. It simply means that if you can't take up 60%, you have the capacity to actually invest. Whether you were registered two weeks ago, one month ago, 10 years or 30 years ago, it may not actually account. It's a question of your financial capability to refund that industry. So it's a welcome development. It will add to other sorts of income for the Enugu State Government. We continue to come fast for a diversified economy. Uh, and I'm seeing this very government of Enugu State trying to do such by bringing these investors that will open up this very area to serve as a source of income to the government of Enugu State. So it's a welcome development. So I also need the opposition in the state to follow up through so that there will be some level of accountability and resort oriented in this regard. So be on the side of those who criticize, so they keep on pointing out those issues or the gray area they needed uh, some clarification or clarity to. So it's good on both sides. Thank you. Wonderful. Now, I, I think the key thing is that, um, you know, in as much as they are not uh, running foul of the law uh, in the process of incorporation and reaching this agreement or this partnership, uh, you are saying that it's good to go. Now, what impact do you foresee uh, when it comes to job creation because we understand sometimes if these partnerships are not also well structured uh you have a situation where um some of the job opportunities uh will be frittered away to uh you know so-called expatriates what do you see in these dynamics oh uh, yes that's why i said on one hand it's good that government and back in this very our, our arrangement, our agreement, or memorandum for understanding. And on the other hand, it's also good that uh, this great area has been pointed out uh, beyond a partnership, beyond uh, pronouncements of investments uh, and collaborations. We need to see some results. And the result cannot fall from the blues. It cannot come from levels. It has to come with some level of capacity. It has to come with some level of commitment. It shouldn't be rhetoric or for just for the same bite of 100 billion deal we need mm. to see start seeing these individual building capacity to actually deliver on that like the job creations if you continue to run it as a rhetoric you will not be able to get those job job opportunities that will be available have in mind that the farm production of the farm is one of the best commodities that can get revenue for the state and this very palm plantation has been moribund for more than like i said three decades it's quite good that this decision is coming but we need some level of commitment that shows that these very individuals has the capacity to actually reform and make sure that this very palm uh, plantation starts uh, yielding necessary and necessary income and necessary job opportunities that should come from me. So uh, on the side of those who are actually taking these very bull steps to invest this money, we need to see some level of capacity. We need to see some level of commitment. We need to see some level of experience from them so that we can also attest to the fact that, yes, uh, you are capable of really revamping this. So let it not end as rhetoric uh, as being criticized by the oppositions in the state. So the government need to do a lot to make sure that this very agreement or this deal is brought to light, brought to light in the sense that in the next couple of years or months, we, not, we need to start seeing some level of option. We need Need to start seeing some level of revenue amounting from the exercise or activities in this palm plantation so it's a good one yeah it's a good one but you know before i i you know go to my next question uh, regarding the uh, commission of inasawa lithium factory i want you to speak specifically on what can be done what measures do you think you know the stakeholders in enugu state uh, should be uh, looking forward to adopting, you know, to ensure that, you know, like you are saying, it's not just about sandbite, 100 billion 
Naira uh, partnership uh, for revitalization of the of the palm oil uh, factory or the palm palm oil. But what you know do we need to do to ensure that this uh, impact in terms of job creation, in terms of contributing to the GDP of the uh, of the economy, is achieved? Uh, a lot needs to be done, and I can see from the sign and the body language of the governor, he is determined. Like I said, this is a fallout of the yields from the uh, business roundtable they did a couple of months ago. A couple of them are yielding fruits now. Foreign and local investors are picking interest in that state. That's why we need some level of good leaders with good vision. So. Uh, the commitment should come from the governor. It's his vision, it's his, uh, uh, his ideas, so he needs to follow through. He does not make or uh, speak good of him after getting these initiatives and they uh, can't get this deal or get this factory running, creating those jobs that he needed to be created in the state, that's a fine the revenue of the state. So I'm very sure he will follow through to the commitment and see that this deal is brought to life. So I think I believe in him, and I think uh, whatever strength or whatever drive that will make this very deal successful should come from the governor, and I think I have his commitment to today. So I'm very sure he's going to follow through because it will still pay back to him, or it will it will stand as a positive for him uh, if he followed through to this side, and it also counts as negative to him if he actually reneged or uh, Nigerians or the people of Enugu will see this as a sign bad or rhetoric or to make the news for the new sex. So, and I'm mm. very sure he is sincere, he is committed to follow through to this project, and in a couple of months or weeks to come, we start seeing the use. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. This could serve as uh, one of his legacy projects uh, and could even make him a visionary uh, in the context of our economic development. But let me quickly, um, you know, pivot to the commissioning of uh, the lithium factory in Nasarawa State. What do you think? How significant, you know, looking at where we are as a, as a country and in the context of the EV evolution uh, globally? What is the significance of this factory in Nasarawa State? Well, uh, there are two perspectives or two ways to look at it. First is the revenue boost. Then the second is the value chain. First, the revenue base is, is a lot of advantage to the government of uh, Nasarawa State and the federal government as much because this is a natural resource. It will account to the refederation account, and it will also give that Nasrawa state, that 13% derivation, so it's a revenue for the state. Then, on the value chain, is an overall investment opportunity for the Nasrawa state government, or the, the people of Nasrawa state, and Nigeria at large. And lithium is one of the major raw material in producing batteries. And we are talking about, uh, alternate or uh, upgrade power generation and you cannot have a successful launch or implementation of upgrade power generation if you don't have a battery that will support the solar system so this is a quite a good development and i believe for sure that it's not going to end by exporting the raw material to somewhere in china or indonesia but i believe that the factory that will process and produce battery for local use and for even international use will be set up in nigeria that will be the value chain itself because we cannot have the uh, uh, federal government through rural electrification project who is doing experimentation on uh, upgrade solar panels or upgrade electricity generation through uh, light up nigeria project this will serve as a great to this very program and it will also serve as a great advantage to nigerians because you cannot talk about solar panel power if you don't have battery. It's becoming so expensive because the battery is a major component of the solar power electricity generation. Yeah. It's so exorbitant considering the current exchange rate. So if we can produce the battery right here in Nigeria, it will serve to the greater purpose and it will reduce the cost of 
you know, installing or establishing a range of solar panels. Like I said, the ruler electrification program is going on, and this will boost the activities and make sure that they unsurfed the on 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 south areas of Nigeria, both the rural area and cluster of areas. Like I know for sure that you know, rural education, rural electrification projects is going on. They are using some uh, universities, uh, teaching hospitals to do some experimentation mm. in segmentation of producing of great electricity cluster. So this will serve as a very good boost for such projects. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, and by extension, this could also contribute to our foreign uh, earning uh, capabilities. I, I have, uh, I, I will let you go at this point. I have uh, Mr. MJ Young uh, in the studio with me looking at Forex trading. And I, I want to, you know, find out a bit more uh, for the purpose of our audience, who has, you know, this negative position about forex uh, trading in Nigeria. Now, you, you have been talking about the fact that it's a regulated environment. Um, we are seeing that some of these projects that uh, are being, you know, executed in Nigeria, like this lithium factory, will also expand the ability of Nigeria to generate forex. Uh, so, looking at the current devaluation of Naira, uh, because again, one of the object of business is profit. How has profit been affected, you know, uh, this period of the Naira fluctuations? Okay, thank you. Um, when, you know, when, you, when it comes to the issue of forex mm. and trading, yeah. um, the, the, we must um, take one factor into consideration, and that factor is that this money is being converted from, the profit is being converted from dollars back to the Naira. Mm. So that means it is actually an income. So um, the, it, when, when Naira devaluates, and like maybe currently you see Naira, I mean, going um, against, the dollars going up against the Naira, you, you, you discover that most traders are actually making more profit. More profit. For example, uh, let's say someone has a thousand um, dollars, dollars mm. in this account when Naira was depreciated, uh, depreciated mm. and maybe it was equal to uh, 1,000 Naira per dollar. And then by default, if Naira move, um, devaluate and move to 1,400 Naira per dollar, mm. the person has eventually, I mean by default, mm. he has even made a profit of yeah. 50%. So, so my point because we are pressed with time now. Yes. Uh, what I wanted to get out from you uh, on this show for this day, I know we're going to be having you consistently going forward. Um, the issue of scam, all right, what is being done? Because most Nigerians see Forex as scam. What is being done by stakeholders to limit uh, this perception or, you know, eliminate this perception? Yes, I think, I think in that aspect, mm. I'm going to say that um, uh, we, 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 I want to say that th there is, there is poor structure or poor, I mean, system on the ground to actually tackle that. Most Nigerians see forest as scam because even the agencies or institutions that should be involved mm. legally from the government are not involved. You know, yeah. experts has not been uh, experts have not been con consulted and brought into you know the space to the talk more, space. to regulatory space to talk more on it. So the average Nigeria just go online and dive into it without any proper knowledge or guidance. So I think little has been done when it comes to the part of the stakeholders. So, it has been so left to the common man on the street. On the street. So the, your point is that, if I get you right, uh, there is a bit of you know, lack of proper knowledge exactly. uh, you know, within the context of ordinary Nigerians in terms of how forest works. And the, yet, yet they jump into it. So training is needed. I understand you're having a program coming up soon. Is that part of you know, things that needs to be done to eliminate, you know, this kind of uh, poor knowledge yes, environment. Exactly. I think that's one of our core, you know, um, objective in our company because um, we've been going from state to state training people massively and presently we're going to be having the Abuja Affordable Traders invest by June 22nd of I mean, next month in Maitama here in Abuja, where traders from different states will be gathering and experts will be brought. So to impact the proper knowledge for trading. So, so that is what is needed, you know, because the point is Nigerians really want to diversify their uh, portfolio, their income uh, opportunities. And from what we are hearing, Forex kind of provides that opportunity. But yet, you know, the process of 
having adequate information, uh, adequate knowledge about the process and procedures uh, is still yet not very available to Nigerians. We, yeah, we see a lot of training uh, being conducted, but uh, most of those training are not structured to really communicate the adequate knowledge needed. They are structured in, in such a way that it becomes a bit um, selfish, you know, for the benefit of the people that are structuring those training. Uh, what is your recommendation going forward for, you know, like you mentioned, our government has not really come in uh, to help structure and provide the framework for this sector to thrive? Okay, I think I'm going to recommend that um, government look into that sp this space very well because um, we cannot ignore that this space is one of the largest space that youth are diving into mm. right now. People can stay from their house and trade, work from home, and frankly speaking, I'm a graduate from Amodebelo University, mm. and I, I can tell I can tell you that I have created job not just that for my not just for myself but mm. for others. So um, using forest using forest forest trading. Forest trading mm. as a tool. So um, if if the right people come into it, if the stakeholders come into it, and the right knowledge is properly given with proper guidance, mm. I want to say that many jobless Nigerians will not be. And most importantly, it's going to reduce, um, I mean, the internet fraud. Mm -hmm. And like we talk about Yahoo, Yahoo yeah. Plus, the illegal things mm. the common youth does just to earn a living. living. So your, 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 your thinking is that forest could equally help us in tackling the issue of, uh, uh, you know, scam and internet fraud and all that within the youth demography. Uh, all right, we have to leave it here. Um, we are pressed with time. Uh, I can tell you that going forward, we'll be inviting MJ here to share with us some of these dynamics as it has to do with forest trading. It's a sector that is actually, you know, you know very big, very large across the globe. And we know that our youth will be able to tap into that sector adequately if the right environment is provided. Thank you for staying with us on the show, Market Movers, today. Until we call your way again tomorrow, stay tight and remain blessed.